Have you ever wondered if in 30 days you could transform your life entirely so that you would be surprised, you would be amazed at the changes that have happened, at who you have become in just 30 days? So just do these things for the next 30 days and you'll be amazed at what it be amazed at how your life has been totally, totally transformed. We're going to talk about how you can get to a new level of productivity, a new level of health, a new level of happiness and a new level of personal growth in just 30 days. And that's awesome, isn't it? Total transformation in just 30 days. Welcome to my channel, Learning with Sanjeev. Thanks so much for being here. It's such an honor and a privilege to be able to share these thoughts with you. Are you ready to transform your life? Shh, but keep it quiet. These things are powerful. Make sure to watch till the end because at the end, we are going to be talking about personal development and learning. And that's so important, isn't it? So as you know, habits are extremely important, both the bad habits and the good habits. The good habits, obviously, because it helps us to get to a place we want to go. The bad habits because it actually prevents us from getting to where we want to go. But still, they're both important. So what are habits? Little things that we consistently do over and over again for a long period of time, which then becomes part of our life, becomes part of our DNA, becomes part of who we are. And that actually defines whom we end up being. There's a fantastic book all about compounding growth. So you do little things each day consistently. And after 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, you're, you're amazed at the changes that have uh, happened to you. The magic of the compounding effect. Just do the same thing. <laughs> For a while, even you won't notice that there is a difference. After some time, you notice. Ah, my gosh, I look different. I feel different. A little bit longer, there are others who notice you and say, Hey, what's happened to you? Sanjeev, you look different. After a little while longer, that has totally become who you are. As Tony Robbins says, just a 1% change each day in the direction is going to take you in an entirely different direction. Or the, the place you end up in one year is going to be so different to where you are now. Just a 1% change. So when you look at a one degree change on a 360 degree map, one degree is a very small thing, but you, you extend that one degree line as far as you can. And now you see, my gosh, the change is quite big. So 1% multiplied becomes a huge change. So that's what we're going to talk about here. What are habits that we can start doing and consistently do for 30 days, which is going to take you to an entirely uh, different place? Of course, with anything, consistency and commitment becomes extremely important. The more consistent we are, Doing the same thing over and over again and having the commitment to do it is important. So a secret here, something I learned uh, from many people whom I will share as we go through the video. But a small secret here is don't try to do too much in too short a time. Start small. Tiny habits, something that BJ Fogg, uh, a professor at Stanford University actually introduced. Tiny habits, small things repeated over a longer period of time. Small things. Uh, lots of times, why, we, why do we try to do something and fail? Because we try to bite off too much, bite off more than we can chew. You know what I mean? We try to bite off more than we can chew and then we are not able to you know, uh, do it. And then we think it's too hard. Let's get rid of it. It's too difficult for me. I'm not this person. Uh, maybe that other guy can do it, but I can't. And so we give up. We give up too easily. So consistency and commitment. But doing the small things, for example, you want to read a book, you want to start reading again. Yeah, trying to take a book and say, OK, I'm going to I'm going to finish 50 pages today uh, might be too big a chunk. So small thing. Let's read a page. Let's read two pages. I never read a book before in in even a year. So let's read two pages. I'm sure everyone can do that. Read two pages. OK, goal achieved. Small goal. Small increments. Tomorrow, I read two pages again. After three, four days, I find two pages. Reading two pages is really easy. So let's make it three pages a day. Oh, great. Okay. So within a short period of time, you realize, my gosh, I finished 20 pages. I've finished 30 pages. So now you're not reading three pages a day. You're reading five pages, six pages, 10 pages a day. But we have slowly increased that in increments. So tiny habits repeated consistently will give us a great result. So this whole thing of daily habits, doing daily habits for a month, something that we uh, that, that James Clear in his book, his fantastic book, Atomic Habits, 
talks about. So James Clay himself, the story goes that he suffered a serious baseball injury, he struggled to rebuild his life, and then he began focusing on small habits that would help him to rebuild his life, get his strength back, get his focus back, and start achieving stuff again. So these tiny habits gradually led him to improving his health and his mindset, and he became an expert on habit formation, which led him to write this book, uh, Atomic Habits. So James Clear says he clearly committed to improving 1% each day. And that's just that's a small amount, 1% each day, but compounded, repeated, that's going to give us a huge result. So get his book, Atomic Habits. It's, it's a great one. And if I can, in one of the next videos we do, let's do a summary of his book. I'll do a summary of his book for you so that you can, you know, uh, get a deep dive into the book without even uh, having to read it. A great place to start is to define a fantastic morning routine for yourself. A great habit to have, a morning routine, and then just keep repeating that morning routine uh, each day. So what can we do as a productive morning routine? Actually, this book that uh, Tim Ferriss wrote about the tools of the Titans. Uh, he talks about the, the habits of uh, great leaders. And most of these great leaders had a great, fantastic, regular, repeated uh, morning routine. So how we start our day could greatly define how our day ends up and what we do in our day itself. So one of the things that we could do in, in our day, you wake up in the morning. I read this uh, somewhere where this guy said a great morning routine is uh, just these three letters, RPM. Uh, rise, R, wake up, uh, P actually, <laughs> go to the washroom and then meditate. At least spend five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes trying to center your thoughts, focus your mind. Great way to start the day. Because the more we meditate, and science has proved this, the more we meditate, the more we focus, the more we center our thoughts, our whole day changes. We become a different person. We become much more centered. We become calmer. Our stress levels go down. How we react to uh, daily things, uh, things that normally annoy us is going to be different, is going to change. Uh, we are going to be happier. We are going to be more peaceful. And that's going to rub off on the people around us. People around us are going to be happier, are going to be more peaceful. Uh, and want to associate more with us as well so meditation can be a great thing when we talk of meditation there's no necessity that you need to sit cross-legged somewhere uh, you could just do it in your bed while lying down uh, you could do it seated up in a chair uh, anywhere comfortable just close your eyes focus on your breathing as soon as your thoughts go off elsewhere into something else uh, gently bring them back to your breathing it's like you know taking a child to a park or something and the child runs off a uh, small child two years three years old uh, we are not going to scold the child for running off because we know that's what children do. So we find that we walk up to the child or run after the child and hold him or her by a hand and then gently bring them back to us, isn't it? So it's the same thing with our mind. It wanders off, it gets distracted, and gently bring it back, right? Because using force is not going to help us. Gently bring it back uh, to the bed. So meditation could be a great, uh, a great morning routine to start off. RPM. Second thing that we could do is actually get some exercise in. Uh, early morning at least a few minutes there are these great seven minute exercise routines isn't it uh, just seven minutes of exercise uh, with a few seconds of uh, rest between each of the exercises means that the total time you spend on this is about uh, nine and a half minutes i think uh, there are some fantastic routines out there there are apps seven minute apps that you can use there are also videos on youtube with the seven minute exercises you don't need any equipment no gym equipment needed you just need yourself your body weight and a chair I guess everyone has a chair. So that's something you can do. Just seven minutes or total nine and a half minutes that you need to put aside uh, to do get some quick exercise in. I'm sure we can all do that. A great exercise that I use a lot where they say that just maybe 30 seconds of this exercise is equal to five minutes or something else is doing the plank. Uh, I started small, remember saying, okay, start small so that you can actually do it. So initially it was 15 seconds, 30 seconds, 45 seconds and now I have actually worked myself up to two minutes. I'm sure some of you out there are, are laughing saying, okay, what's, what's two minutes? Two minutes is nothing. I can do four minutes. I can do five minutes. That's fantastic. But two minutes is great for me and from where I started and we are slowly uh, increasing as well. Consistency again, right? So two minutes of the plank, possibly equivalent to maybe 10 minutes of doing something else. So just that one exercise could give you a huge energy boost to, to you know, start your day on a high, start your day feeling great. Because when your energy goes up, your mood becomes positive. You think happier thoughts, you're feeling great. So all that is actually connected. So what are we saying? Start your day, have a, have a defined morning routine, get up, do some meditation, do some exercise. 
And the next thing, do some journaling. So journaling is a, again a great habit that lots of uh, the titans in Tim Ferriss' book, Tools of the Titans do. They do the meditation as well. Journaling, just putting down your thoughts, what's in your mind. So it actually helps you to plan your day, helps you to figure out, okay, what do I want to achieve in, in this day? Helps you to get collect your thoughts, get your mind focused, and then you can you know start your day uh, with a bang. So just go through what are the goals you have, what are the things you want to achieve uh, in, in this day as well. So those are a few things uh, we can do. And uh, I think all of them together probably won't take you more than 20 minutes, uh, 30 minutes max. I'm sure we can do that. So just set aside that time, do another technique called time blocking, which is actually set aside the time, schedule the time for these activities. So you plan for it. You set aside that time. So that's time blocking. Setting aside the time to do these morning routines. And as I'm talking to you, it, it reminds me that I have not been as consistent as I want to be as well. So good reminder, good wake up call for myself as well. So I'm going to commit to doing this as well. And I hope you do do it as well. So then we can do it together. Uh, maybe we can even help each other, motivate each other with the comments and things like that. You can ask me, Sanjeev, are you doing it? And then we can help each other to get to the goal that we want. So let's start a great morning routine. Yeah? There is a great author called Hal Elrod, uh, the author of this book called The Miracle Morning. And he talks about something called the Savers Routine, the Savers Morning Routine, S-A-V-E-R-S. -E and that is basically silence. Well, that's the meditation again. Affirmations, so giving yourself some positive thoughts. Look yourself in the eye, look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself, hey, so if your name is David, hey, David, today is going to be an awesome day. It's like somebody is telling yourself, somebody is telling you. So that's the affirmations. A visualization, again, we can combine this with the meditation because when you're in a deep state of a deep meditative state, it's easier to visualize, easier to figure out what we want to do and see that as something happening now, exercise is the E, R is reading. That's another great thing to do if you, if you want to do that. Bring that into your morning routine as well. Even read one or two pages, it jump starts your day. And uh, uh, S is for scribing, or we called it journaling uh, earlier. So Hal Elrod says, the way you start your day determines the way you live your day. Hal Elrod says, the day you start your day determines the way you live your day. And I think uh, that's quite true. So let's start our day with a bang. Some productivity techniques that we can do, especially uh, when we go to work, do your morning routine, uh, you want to do some great stuff uh, uh, in the day. So one of the things we can actually do is plan our day, make our schedule, uh, not to do everything on our schedule, but prioritize uh, what you want to do and then you schedule your priorities. So you end up doing the things that are actually important to you. Uh, sometimes we just have a whole lot of things on our schedule and we just go through uh, in order of what we wrote. But once you have written down the stuff that you think you need to do, actually then go one step further and prioritize it. It's right? so a prioritization. What is most important to you? Uh, what is most urgent to you? We need to probably have a longer chat on uh, how to prioritize stuff. Uh, but, uh, but a quick answer for you here is something that uh, they is, is attributed to uh, uh, Eisenhower. Uh, the, the US president, Ike. It's called uh, the Eisenhower Matrix. Uh, and uh, Stephen Covey also talks about it in his book, uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. So he says, make a quadrant. One, one axis to be urgency and the other one to be importance. And then you choose, first of all, what are the activities which are high in urgency and high in importance? Put it into quadrant number one. You do those first. Uh, second is Things that are high in urgency but low in importance, you put that into quadrant number two, do that next. And then you do uh, what is high in importance but low in urgency, quadrant number three. Those are the long-term things that we need to do like exercising, uh, building up strength, building up stamina, health, uh, reading, all of this stuff. Uh, not urgent but it's definitely important. And the fourth quadrant is the things that are not urgent and not important and ideally we actually give it to someone else to do or uh, get rid of it altogether. Uh, lots of times, for lots of us, we find that we spend a lot of time actually doing stuff in the fourth quadrant, what is not urgent and not important. And that's not going to help us. <laughs> that's not going to take us to where we want to be. Time blocking, setting aside the time. For example, there's a large report that you have to do at work today. So if you can get in some quality time to do that report in the morning, because in the morning, your mind is working at peak. It's, it's working... Uh, 
at the highest efficiency. So if you can block that time of let's say 9 to 11, I'm going to set aside to do this report. I'm not going to do anything else. If somebody calls me for a meeting, I'm going to say, no, I'm sorry, I have something else on my plate at the moment. I can't come for this. So 9 to 11, you even lock yourself up in a room somewhere and give some quality, dedicated, focused time to doing that report, getting it out of the way. Which means the biggest thing you had scheduled for yourself for the days is now over. The report is over, which means there's a huge load off your mind uh, as well. So time blocking is basically once you have your schedule, you have your priorities, you block off the time in the day that you need to set aside to get these things done. So once the time is blocked out, say 9 to 11 is blocked out, you're not going to put anything else in there other than what you wanted to do in that time. Same thing for your morning routine, you can block that out as well. So time blocking is actually a great uh, thing to do. So today for myself, I have blocked out a great part of my day uh, because I'm going to actually do some interviews of people. We're trying to recruit some people into, into our organization. So I have blocked out some time today uh, at different times of the day for these interviews, which means I can't put anything else those times because that time is blocked out. Same thing that you would actually do on a calendar. So you set aside the time on the calendar, you have an appointment with someone, you have a meeting with someone. We actually put our meetings into the calendar and block the time out, but we don't block the time out for the work we have to do. So it's the same principle. You already do time blocking because you set aside time for meetings. Actually, meetings could be one of the most unproductive things that we spend uh, doing in the day. But I think there's a time for another discussion of meetings. So look out for that one. All right, so productivity techniques, as productivity techniques, time blocking is one of them. Uh, and when if, if you are someone who procrastinates, you put things off. Okay, I can't do it today. It's too big a thing. It takes me four hours to get this task done. I don't have four hours today, so let me put it off. Uh, let me do it tomorrow. Uh, and then like the James Bond film, tomorrow never comes. <laughs> when tomorrow comes, I don't have time tomorrow. So let's put it off for another day as well. So this thing called the Pomodoro technique is a great technique to get procrastination out of your life. So Pomodoro a technique is something that uh, Francisco Cirillo came out with in uh, the 1980s. And it's called Pomodoro. Interesting story there. Uh, his timer or his alarm clock uh, was in the shape of a tomato. So in Italian, I'm told... Uh, the Italian word for tomato is pomodoro, so he called it the pomodoro technique. So what we do here, or what Francisco Cirillo tells us to do is, if you have a long task to do, it takes four hours to do this task, five hours to do this task, don't think of the four hours or five hours you need to spend. But just ask yourself, can you spend 25 minutes working on this activity? And for most of us, 25 minutes is not a big deal. We can, we can easily set aside 25 minutes and start. So with procrastination and putting something off, the biggest challenge is actually starting. Once you start, you can get going. Starting is the biggest problem. So here we are saying, can you force yourself to put in some work for 25 minutes on this larger thing that you have to do? And I'm sure you can, can't you? Can't you put in 25 minutes? You can, I can. So you put in the 25 minutes of time, and no sooner the 25 minutes is over, you said you have set your alarm clock to ring in 25 minutes, alarm rings, you give yourself a reward, give yourself a five minute break. Five minute break time is over. You ask yourself, okay, that 25 minutes wasn't too bad. Can I give myself another 25 minutes? And that's the second Pomodoro. So each cycle of uh, 25 minutes plus five minutes is called one Pomodoro. So now I gave myself one Pomodoro, did 25 minutes of work, it's over. I'm ask myself, can I do another 25 minutes? And most of the time what you will feel is, yes, I can. So then we set the alarm clock again, another 25 minutes and do another cycle. You do four cycles like this and after that you give yourself a bigger break, 30 minute break, because you have earned it. And now you realize, my gosh, if I did four Pomodoros, I have already spent two hours on this project, which earlier I had not spent any time at all. You see, so you get got rid of procrastination. This is a great thing to use when you keep putting things off, uh, work-related stuff, uh, reports, uh, analysis you have to do, studies for exams that you have to do, uh, whatever you have to do, just get it started. Get it start, getting started is the biggest challenge. Once we start, uh, we can go on. So Tim Ferriss, whom we were talking about earlier, I'm a big fan uh, uh, of Tim Ferriss. Another great book he wrote was The 4-Hour uh, Workweek. How you can actually just put in 4 hours a week and uh, do a lot of stuff and that's enough. So he says the focus, that focus is the key to provide productivity. Remove distractions and you will see the results and I think that's true. Remember what I was telling you about setting aside 2 hours to do a report. If you are trying to do that report in your busy office where there are people walking up and down all the time, people come and come in and talking to you all the time, you're going to be distracted and that two hours that you could have uh, spent and finished that report 
you're not going to be able to do it in two hours. It's probably going to take you three or four. Uh, there was an interesting study done which showed that each time you're distracted, it takes something like 23 minutes and 15 seconds to get our focus back. And that's a lot, isn't it? I think this was a research done at uh, uh, one of the universities, I think University of California. The findings were each time you're distracted, it takes us 23 minutes and 15 seconds to get our focus back. Uh, so think if you're distracted for eight times in the day, how much of time are we actually wasting just getting our focus back? <laughs> Isn't it better to go, go into a room somewhere, go into a meeting room or even do this report at home before you actually walk into your workplace because you are productive, you have got more done in the day. It's all about working smarter, getting more done in the day faster to a higher quality. Then you're happy, family is happy, boss is happy, workplace is happy, everyone is happy. But we have to make that conscious decision to make those changes in the way that we work. So try these daily habits uh, for a month and let's see how things are, isn't it? Something else we can do on the health and wellness side. We, we spoke about exercise earlier as well. Exercise could be something key. I try to actually walk about eight kilometers each day. Uh, some days it doesn't work. Uh, I, I'm not able to do it, but nine times out of ten, eight times out of ten, I actually get it done. Uh, it didn't start... Uh, with eight kilometers that's where i am now it started with one kilometer and now what i do is i, I alternate between walking and jogging 100 meters of walking and then 100 meters of jogging and that's great so i'm ending up actually jogging for four kilometers and walking for four and that's that's great that's great for someone uh, 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 like like me yeah I'm, I'm proud of that what about you so again let's get started again that that becomes important also what we eat so incorporating uh, a variety of nutrients into what we eat uh, so fruits, vegetables, this so-called Mediterranean diet, if uh, what we eat is like really colorful, it's supposed to be really good for us. Uh, fruit, vegetables, lean proteins, uh, whole grains, all of that. Uh, some of the things we can do is actually stop or reduce sugar. Uh, that's, that's going to bring your weight down and on the other side it's going to uh, make you feel great, feel healthier uh, as well. So while talking to you, I'm actually having a, having a cup of tea. Uh, let me just grab that. By talking to her, having a cup of tea, and I started actually drinking tea uh, with no sugar. Where I come from in Sri Lanka, it's uh, the tea is really good, Ceylon tea, as it was as it was called uh, in the past. Fantastic. The best way to drink tea is actually without milk or sugar, because then you get the real flavor of the tea. So something I started doing uh, in the recent past, uh, and I find it it's 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 great now. Earlier I couldn't drink tea without sugar, but now I'm actually doing that again. Starting doing something and then being consistent and having the commitment to follow through, uh, repeat it. So Jim Rohn, another great motivational speaker whom I, I like a lot, says that uh, take care of your body. It's the only place you have to live. Take care of your body. It's the only place you have to live. So what we put into it through food and what we do with it through exercise and stuff like that. So yoga is another, another great uh, practice that you can actually start doing and make it part of your routine. And again, the more we exercise, what happens is that the body's natural morphine, which is in endorphin, gets kicked in and we feel great as well. So you get to an exercise high, you feel great. Exercise is really awesome. Uh, yoga actually helps you get mental clarity as well. Uh, and while you're doing yoga, you could actually do meditation. While you're jogging, you can do the uh, jogging meditation or walking meditation, which is just being focused exactly where you're placing your feet. Just thinking about that, feeling the weight of your body as you take a step forward. Uh, so, so many things we can combine as well. I actually combine learning with walking and jogging. So, I'm, while I'm walking and jogging, I'm listening to audiobooks, I'm listening to podcasts, uh, I'm listening to talk shows, I'm improving my language capabilities, I'm improving my knowledge. So many things we can actually simultaneously do as well. So, here we spoke about other great daily habits we can start, like what you put into your body is what you end up becoming. So be conscious of that, uh, having a great balanced diet, getting the exercise in, getting some yoga in and Jim Rohn, what he said, take care of your body because it's the only place uh, we have to live. So what do we do now when we get to work? What are some great work habits and attitudes that we can uh, develop so that we see a great uh, difference in how we work as well? One thing you can do at work is uh, try to see how you can contribute. I'm just going to change uh, what John F. Kennedy said. So John F. Kennedy said, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Same way, when you go to your workplace, ask not what your workplace can do for you, but think, what can you do for your organization? Uh, that's a great habit to start. Because as soon as we do that, what happens? We start adding more value. When you add more value to your organization, the organization values you more. 
which means guess whom they are going to think of the next time there's an opening the next time there's a promotion opportunity the next time there is there's some a training opportunity or whatever they're going to think of you because you made yourself uh, valuable you you made yourself known for being valuable for this person whom who can be counted on so tim ferris author of the four hour work week whom we were talking of earlier was also overworked stressed he was managing his company for 80 hours and he realized that he can't he can't continue this he can't sustain this so what did he do he is a great guy actually going and learning from others adopting what they do uh, using productivity hacks, uh, exercise hacks, uh, so many things like that. And yeah, the very embodiment of using this 80-20 rule. So what he says is, okay, put in 20% of the effort and get 80% uh, of the results. Find what you can do. So he redefined his work uh, work balance by uh, by actually uh, using this Pareto principle, which is the 80-20 rule. Focus on the 20% of work that gets the biggest results. Figuring that out. Uh, doing something, spending some time on that, but doing the things that are going to give you a bigger result and maybe outsourcing the things that still need to be done, but maybe don't need to be done by you. Uh, maybe someone else can do it because those are going to not give you such a big uh, result. So figuring out what are the things that you can do in your day, which will give you the biggest bang for the buck, right? Biggest bang for the buck. Uh, putting in less time, but getting a uh, bigger result. So what Tim Ferriss did was he started automating and outsourcing the stuff that he felt he didn't have to focus on himself because it wasn't uh, stuff that would get a, give a huge result, maybe things that uh, were necessary to do, but that, that didn't yield the greatest result. So that's a great approach to have. If you write, write down, where does your time go in your day? Uh, what are you doing each day? So maybe do a time audit for a couple of weeks uh, and then you'll find out how your time is being utilized. If you want to do a time audit, just send me a, drop me an email uh, at the email you see in the description and I'll send you a template which you can use to do a time audit and that could be a great way of figuring out where is your time going because then you can figure out okay am I using my time in the most optimal useful way am I doing the stuff uh, that I should be doing am I doing the stuff that is giving me the biggest bang for the buck or the biggest result or am I actually wasting my time so once uh, where your time is going something you can start doing is actually setting yourself some goals setting yourself some smart goals so we all know what this thing smart goals mean. Uh, it's something, a term that has been used for so long now. So, but let me just reiterate it here. Smart goals is S-M-A-R-T. So it stands for the goal has to be specific, clear, uh, laser focus. So we know exactly what we're trying to do. Uh, M is measurable. It has to be something we can measure. If, if I have a goal saying I want to improve, uh, that's a crappy goal because how do you measure that? Or if I set a, a goal set, I'm going to be better. What does that mean? How do you measure that? What does better mean? If I say I'm going to set a goal that in two months time, I'm going to be able to uh, walk and jog for 10 kilometers. Okay. Is that specific enough? Yes. Uh, is that measurable? Yes. Is that a time limit there in two months? So that's the T of SMERT. That's, that's time. Is, have we set a defined time for this goal achievement? Uh, a is, is it achievable? Yeah, I believe it is because I'm doing eight kilometers now. I can easily stretch that to 10. Is it relevant to my fitness? Is it relevant to my life? Is it relevant to me? That's the R. And yes, it is. And there we have S-M-A-R-T. So set yourself some goals. Goals are a great way to keep an eye on where we want to go, uh, what do we want, what's important to us, what are we trying to achieve. And then we actually know it's that so achieving goals is like passing milestones on our, on our journey to where we want to be. So if you achieve those goals, it's like you're passing the milestones and okay, I'm going in that direction. So break down your goals, write down your goals first. If you have a goal which is a 12-month 12, 12 goal, a one-year goal, uh, you need to break that down into smaller pieces because uh, we can't do what we have to do in one year uh, in a day, isn't it? So then you need to break that down to see, okay, if that's my one-year goal. So one-year goal is I'm going to build a house. So in one year, I'm going to have a house for myself. Okay, great, awesome goal. Uh, in order to have that house in one year, uh, what do I do in this month? So this month might be, let me go look for a plot of land that I can purchase. Uh, month number two, I found the land. Uh, let me get uh, a loan uh, in order to purchase this land and then construct the house. Uh, month number two, also, also I might find an architect to get the design going, uh, stuff like that. Month number three, I got the loan and I start with the foundation. And can you see, so each month I have goals, sub goals that I'm setting for myself. And the achievement of these sub goals would lead me to achieve the ultimate goal in one year. 
so it's goal setting is a, is a great thing as well. Tony Robbins, another uh, great, uh, I'm another great fan of uh, Tony Robbins. Uh, he's someone who has inspired me a lot. So many people have inspired me a lot in this video itself. You want to get ahead. All you need to do is stand on the shoulders of giants. I'm trying to do that. Standing on the shoulders of people like Tim Ferriss, Tony Robbins, Jim Rohn, all giants, isn't it? So Tony Robbins says setting goals is the first step in turning the invisible into the visible. Setting goals is the first step in turning the invisible into the visible. So when we have a goal, at least we have a beacon. We know in which direction we are going, where, where are we got trying to end up, where are we trying to go. In order to achieve goals, we discussed uh, prioritization, which is also under the subject of time management. We discussed about prioritization. We discussed about using uh, tools like the Eisenhower matrix, uh, which uh, Stephen Covey also talks about. Uh, avoiding pro procrastination, we spoke about that as well. Uh, creating a, a to-do list, creating a schedule for each day. So time management is a, a very important thing if we are going to uh, be able to achieve what we want uh, for ourselves. So setting your goals, make sure you're setting uh, goals that's going to help you in your, in your work, uh, goals that are going to help you in your personal life as well, like exercising, reading, uh, doing some exams, uh, uh, progressing on your career path, uh, stuff like that. Another great person you can actually uh, ask for help from uh, in order to set your path, figure out where do you want to go is, is your immediate supervisor at work. Always think of your boss as your friend because your boss is going to be crucial. And in your in your current workplace, if you if you are think if you are laughing at the moment saying what nonsense, Sanjeev, uh, my boss is not my friend, then maybe you need to consider whether you need to shift, move into something else. Because I, I believe it's absolutely crucial having a boss in your workplace who, who likes you and who will support you. Uh, it's, otherwise, it's going to be much, much, much more uh, difficult to move forward. So Stephen Covey, we're talking of uh, what he said uh, about the Eisenhower metrics in his book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. He says the key is not to prioritize what's on your schedule, but to schedule your priorities. We discussed this also a uh, little bit earlier in the video, but it, it, it's great to reiterate that fact as well. Not to prioritize what's on your schedule, but to schedule what are your priorities. So then actually you schedule in what's important to you. You are doing that using time blocking and setting aside time to do what's important to you. And then you're actually doing what's important to you. And then that is going to take you forward on this path of where you want to go, what you want to do in your life, where you want to be, what you want to achieve. So when we come to the next point of, of uh, the great things we can do for ourselves, start doing in 30 days and see where we end up. Uh, personal development and learning is, is, is very important, isn't it? Uh, so BJ Fogg, remember BJ Fogg, I just referred to him uh, earlier as well. So there's a great TED talk uh, of BJ Fogg, uh, where he talks of this, uh, his concept of tiny habits and he wrote a book also called Tiny Habits. So what he says is, uh, the longest journey has to start with a single step. Uh, somebody else also said that. <laughs> longest journey starts uh, with this with a single step. So, so if he says, okay, don't try to do too much too soon. Set yourself a small goal. It's like if I ask you, can shall we go out and run a marathon? You're going to laugh. But if I say, come on, can we go out and just walk for 100 meters? That's going to be something possible, doable. So he says, start doing things that you don't need a, a lot of motivation to do. So stuff that is easy stuff that you can actually achieve and then tick a, put a mental tick and I did this. So don't try to do stuff that needs a huge amount of motivation or time or energy or money to do initially because then we are going to most of the time fail and then that's going to take us backwards because we are going to lose our self-belief. We are going to believe we can't do this. So one example, uh, doing push-ups <laughs> and uh, BJ Fogg uses this example as well doing push-ups hey, don't try to do 10 at least uh, maybe do one and i did that actually so i started even doing one was difficult i managed to do one the next after two three days i could do two and now i have slowly worked myself up to be able being able to do uh, 20 push-ups and what bj fox says is if you're trying to start a new habit always link it to something you are already doing so after you wake up in the morning after you wake up do push-ups so after so each day you're going to wake up in the morning uh, after you do something, you do something else. After you wake up, after you brush your teeth, you go and do some meditation. So then you're linking the new habit to something you do anyway. And that link is going to make sure that you actually start doing the new habit. But tiny habits, not too much, too soon, tiny habits. So he says, break the big goal into tiny actionable steps which can create momentum and then uh, move us forward. Uh, so we can bring tiny habits into learning, into reading, 
as we discussed earlier go pick up some great books that that are going to help you we have already talked about uh, spoken about some great books in this video as well atomic habits uh, for our work week tiny habits of uh, bj fogg lots of uh, the uh, seven habits of highly effective people great book so you can start doing that uh, go follow some courses and workshops which can actually enhance your learning uh, take you the next step forward where you want to be keep moving forward uh, you want any tips on speed reading uh, how do you read more of, uh, in less time will talk to me i have a course on speed reading which you can actually register for if that's going to help you uh, it's my own version of speed reading called lightning reading which is actually fantastic i've taught this to more than 3000 people from 24 countries uh, and it works for sure uh, so set goals for learning as well uh, you can also set goals for networking and building relationships because that's important isn't it so go join a networking organization, something like be like BNI, Business Networking Organization, a bit Business Networking International, or Rotary, or Alliance, or some movement like that where you're going to meet like-minded people. You're going to help society, you're going to do things for others, plus you're going to meet a bunch of great people and build your relationships as well. Go join an organization in the next 30 days. Something we can do. Also, uh, reach out to people, people, your friends, your colleagues uh, from your earlier workplaces, from your university, uh, from your school, you have not spoken to in a while, uh, rebuild the connection. Hi, how are you? What's happening in your life? Start rebuilding that connection. That's going to uh, help you as well. The author Porter Gale uh, emphasizes how important uh, using a network is. As she says uh, in that book, uh, Porter Gale says, your network is your net worth. And I think that's important. What do we do? Start these habits, reflect on where you are, what's happening, are you moving forward, are you happy, is this helping you, and then make necessary adjustments. If you're trying to do too much too fast, change it. You, you are the judge, you are the boss, you're in control, you're in charge of your life, you decide what's happening, you decide what's going to happen, you decide what needs to happen. That's great. And just to end up with a quick motivational story, I'm sure it will motivate you because it motivated me, of the author Stephen King. So Stephen King is one of the world's most successful authors and he says that one of the reasons for his success was he, he basically has a habit of writing every single day, every, even on holidays. He says, I write 2000 words a day whether I have something to write or not, whether I have an idea or not, I just sit down and I write. And when I start writing, I get ideas. All right. So let's do that. Just start. Starting is the most difficult thing. Once we start, we can move forward. So what have we discussed here? We have discussed about some great habits you can start doing. Uh, let's do this for the next 30 days and you'll be amazed at where you are. But of course, just having the intention I'm going to do this is uh, not going to take us anywhere. We actually have to get our hands dirty and start doing it. So remember, BJ Fogg, tiny habits, start small. So we spoke about a great morning routine you can build up for yourself. Uh, we spoke about how some productivity hacks you can use, get more done faster. Uh, stuff you can do for health, uh, wellness and exercise and stuff like that. Uh, work habits and attitudes you can set up like setting some goals, using time management uh, so that you get more done again. And then finally, personal development and learning. So learning, reading, uh, doing courses, expanding your knowledge, expanding your net worth by networking more. Come on everyone, can we commit to this one month challenge? And tell me in the comments after one month how things are, where you are. You can write to me as well. I'll be so delighted to hear from you. I'm going to start doing this stuff. I hope you are as well. So thank you very much for joining me on this, on this little journey, this discussion of uh, what we can do in 30 days, which will be totally amazing, turn our lives totally around. Please do drop me a comment if you need any help, you want uh, some particular videos in, a, in, in some area that you feel might help you. Uh, talk to me. It's been great. Uh, Chatting with you, it's been great uh, having you uh, watching this video uh, on, on my channel. Stay safe and stay blessed. Until the next one.